This is the pre-lab video for Biology 1441, the diversity in a drop lab, how to use a microscope. In this lab, we're going to introduce some lab safety stuff. We're going to talk about some lab policies and then also look at some pond water samples. So some basic courtesies for bio to lab. Always arrive on time. If you're five minutes late, you won't be able to take the lab quiz. If you're 10 minutes late, you will not be able to attend lab and you will be counted absent. You will not be able to make up the missed lab. So a few other things you need to keep in mind when your instructor's talking, pay attention. Uh, no talking during that time. Your phone should be put away unless permission is given. We will use them from time to time, so have them handy, but put them away. All group members must participate. A uh, lab group should not leave until lab is dismissed, and it's up to you to help keep the lab clean. You will be given assignments to help keep the lab clean. And uh, when you do your homework assignments, make sure that you do them on your own. There is no group homework unless you are told that there is a group assignment. So do not let anyone see your assignment. Don't share it with anyone to help them out outside of the classroom because that is the most common way students uh, get a zero uh, other than not turning something in is by letting someone look at their assignment then their buddy copies it and they both get zeros on that assignment. In case of emergency what we will do is we will go down the stairwell uh, in the Bio2 labs approximately here so we'll go down the stairwell go around the Lewis Science Center and we'll meet in the Ferris Center parking lot. This will be done in a nice casual single file line with your instructor at the back of the line to make sure everyone gets out. Please do not run off uh, if there's a fire alarm because we have to account for everyone before we know what to do next. So if you're missing, then the fire department's going to be looking for you. So don't run off. Okay, so no food or drink in the lab. Don't mind the page numbers up here, that's from uh, Bio One Lab. But no food or drink in the lab allowed. Um, also, report any injuries, no matter how slight, immediately. Another thing that you have to keep in mind is we cannot have open toe shoes, which include flip flops or sandals, in the lab. It's a safety thing, it's a legal thing. We can't allow it in there. Um, also, make sure you figure out, and your instructor should show you, where the fire extinguishers and eyewash stations are. And first aid kits are usually in the prep room, and if you have any sort of an injury, please let us know so we can get you uh, a Band-Aid. Uh, also bear in mind that you cannot miss more than uh, two labs, so once you miss three labs, you'll be dropped from the course, and uh, you want to make sure to keep on top of that. Um, today we'll be talking about microscopes in class, and you may well have used one already, but it'll, it'll be a good chance for you to, uh, during this video and then in lab, to learn the microscope parts, which I guarantee will eventually be a lab quiz. So up here, the parts that you look in, those are known as the ocular lenses. The objective lenses are the lenses down below, the ones that you rotate. And the scopes we'll be using usually have 4, 10, and 40 times objective lenses. So if you're set to 4 times on your objective lens and your ocular lens magnifies everything 10 times, that means the overall view is 40 times magnification. So your scopes uh, can go from 40 to 400 times total magnification. The stage is where you place the microscope slide. You clip it into this uh, silver clip that's on the stage. And then you can move the stage around using the stage controls. You have a coarse and fine focus knob. Here you have a light source and you'll have a rheostat. Even if your scope model differs from the one shown, the parts are all basically the same. The rheostat controls light intensity. There's also a condenser on the base of the uh, stage. The condenser focuses light from the light source onto the specimen, and it also contains a small lever that, is, uh, that controls the iris diaphragm, which controls the amount of light actually passing through to the specimen. So the best way to get started with a scope like this is to put the slide on the stage, put it on the lowest power, turn the light on about midway. If it's still too bright, adjust it with the iris diaphragm, look through the eyepieces, 
and crank on your course focus, bringing the stage closer to the lens while you're looking through the eyepiece until something, even if it's just fuzzy glass, you know, of the slide comes more and more into focus and you'll start to see edges and lines and maybe even the specimen. Then you can use the course focus to get it pretty much fine tuned and then finish your focusing with the fine focus. Once you go to higher powers, it's important that you only use the fine focus because once you go to 40x, the lens and the slide will almost touch. And if you move the course focus, you could easily crack one or both uh, of, those, of those objects, the lens or the slide. So be very, very careful with that. One of the common ways that students uh, mess up or st things they struggle with with this is getting their specimen in focus. So first of all, always start with low power, look in the lens and move that stage closer and closer until you see something. Um, the other thing students often do is have the light way too bright and, and they either can't see, it hurts their eyes, or uh, the specimen's just not very detailed. So uh, dimmer is always better. Um, but you can control that easily with the iris diaphragm and then if need be with the uh, rheostat. Another thing I want to point out is that the ocular lenses can move closer together or further apart. So if your eyes are close together, you can push them closer together. If they're far apart, you can put them farther apart. We'll also be using um, dissecting scopes. We do have a few different models of those. This is one example, um, but there will also be ocular lenses. There is going to be a single external lens here with internal parts that can be changed by turning the magnification knob. And our scopes vary slightly, but usually they're roughly 1 to 40 times um, total magnification. That's including the setting here and the uh, magnification by the ocular lens. So uh, the dissecting scopes tend to go up to about 40x total magnification, and that's where the uh, that's where the compound scopes pick up. So they start at 40 and go up to about 400. So there's a focus knob, there's a light source, there's usually a rheostat. There's usually more than one light source on these, one from above for looking at 3D objects like your hand or a bug. Um, there is a light from beneath to look through uh, water samples or slides. And so this will work very much uh, like the compound scope is in, in all other major uh, respects. But you need to figure out which light source you want on. Make sure your light source, if it's the above light source, is actually aimed at your specimen. Play around with light levels and focus, and uh, you should be able to get this uh, the hang of this pretty quickly. So you're going to prepare samples this week, and I advise if you watch this video before lab like you should, uh, if you have access to a pond or a lake, bring in a water sample. Scoop in some mud and some leaves. Make sure you don't get a clear water sample because there's nothing in a clear water sample. Life lives in the murky gunk where it can hide and eat. So get a sample. When you bring it in, we'll take a, a dropper and we'll get a, a, a drop of that sample. And then what we'll do is we will um, put a cover slip on that drop stick it on your scope and see what we can find. So we'll, we'll examine our pond water samples both with the compound and the dissecting scope to see what sorts of critters we can find and I'll have you take a few pictures this week um, to show that you found some autotrophs, organisms that photosynthesize as well as heterotrophs and you'll try to identify them as well as you can. So that'll be one of the major goals this week uh, to identify as many organisms as we can at least to figure out uh, their major clades. All right, well, that's a quick rundown of what we'll do. You'll get filled in a little more, with a little more detail in lab this week, but if there's a lab, pre-lab video posted, make sure you watch it before lab because it will help you to prepare for lab quizzes and things. So keep on top of that. Check out this website every week, and I'll see you in lab.